Well, being a freshman in college is never easy. You can't always find your way to class. You may not know a ton of people at your new school, and let's not forget about Freshman Friday. You add in the fact that 300-pound linemen are trying to make it their goal to knock you on your backside, and it can be a little bit of an intimidating experience. My next guest knows all about that ordeal, Jarrett Dagey. Number two, QB1, joins me today. Jarrett, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So let's talk numbers for a second, specifically the number two. It's not just the number that you wear on your chest and on your back every game. You were the second true freshman quarterback to start a game for the Orange and Brown since 1982, and I know that you knew that heading into that first game against Akron. With you knowing that, did that kind of put a little bit of extra stress on your shoulders going into that game? I actually had no idea until it was tweeted. Um, I just got my number called and uh, did my job um, and, and, and made the most of what I could do. Speaking of last year, 2017 statistically, the second best year for a freshman quarterback in the entire history of BGSU football. And with great statistics come great expectations. So heading into 2018, did it kind of feel like, well, there's a little bit of extra pressure on me to build off of that year that I had in 2018? Not too much pressure. Um, just a little com more confident than I was last year uh, going through that uh, spring football uh, and getting to know the playbook, the players and the coaches, uh, becoming a leader of this team and, and just being that much more confident this year. So at the start of 2017, you were preparing to be the number two guy on the depth chart. You were behind James Morgan, and it kind of looked like unless something went wrong, you were going to be the backup guy for the whole year. Seven games in, Coach Jinx says it's time to make a change. Five games later, 250-plus yards in each of your first four games. How did you stay not only ready enough but mentally focused enough to get your number called and go in and succeed? Yes, sir. Um, in the QB room, we all uh, prepare like we're about to be uh, the starter. And when my number was called, uh, I was prepared mentally. Um, I did my film study. I, I did my work uh, on the field. And when my name was called, I went in there and was able to be successful. Your brother, Seth, special teams coach for BGSU. How special is it to be able to share this college experience that you're having with him every week? It's awesome. Um, just having my brother on the sideline uh, in that coaching office, I can go ask him any questions, uh, come, come off the field, give him a chest bump. Um, he's got uh, the right words to say to me when I come off the field and have a bad play or a good play, and it's just awesome to have him on the sideline. This is the third season under Mike Jinks. This is your second year under him. You have dubbed him as the man who gave you a chance. How has he helped you develop as a quarterback and as a person? Uh, yes, sir. He um, has helped me a lot as a person, um, just growing me, uh, helping me grow a, as, a, as a man, and, and helping me on the field as a football player, um, teaching me how to be a quarterback and how to be a leader of a football team. You're no shyer away from playing in front of big crowds. From what I understand about Texas high school football, mm -hmm. it's life or death. Mm -hmm. So how did that compare when you walked in a few weeks ago to the electric crowd at Autzen Stadium? Oh, that was awesome. It, it, at Austin, it was uh, nothing compared to, to my high school stadium, although my high school stadium uh, was rocked and, and juiced every Friday. But um, having however many fans was, was in those stands, uh, it was a loud place. And I remember being on third down, and, and they were playing that Purge song, and we were backed up on the one, and it got, it got pretty loud, and, and I loved every minute of it. So a couple weeks ago, up 14-10 against Maryland, going into that second half, the momentum was on your side, Maryland on upset alert. What went wrong in that second half, and what did you guys see in film that made you able to fix it the next week against Eastern Kentucky? Just couldn't get a rhythm, um, uh, couldn't execute the plays, um, had some mental mistakes, um, and, and watched film that week, got them fixed, and uh, was successful versus EKU. Scotty Miller has been a big target for you a great veteran leader for this team, one of the top wide receivers in the MAC the last few years. How helpful is it as a QB? You drop back in the pocket, you see number 21 running downfield, he's beat his man, he's ready to get that ball from you. How good of a feeling is that? A lot of people uh, can't cover Scotty, and it's awesome to have a guy like him who can make plays. Um, and uh, any play we call, I know if I don't have a guy, I can look to Scotty Miller uh, to him to make a play for me. 
So headed by Austin Labus, this offensive line has been pretty solid to start the year. How comforting of a feeling is it when you drop back, you don't immediately have to think, all right, here comes that D lineman that I've been looking at all game. He's coming and ready to put me on my butt. I've got a couple extra seconds. I can find my receivers and I can make that throw I've been looking to make. The offensive line ha has played a huge role uh, this year. Um, I got full trust in them, um, and they allow me to stand back there and just play pitch and catch, and, and uh, they've done a, done a great job this year. Andrew Clare has also been a big offensive weapon for you guys this year out of the backfield. Is it a bit of a stress reliever to know, hey, I don't have to sling the ball downfield every time. I can hand it off to my running back, stand back, and let him do a little bit of the work. Uh, definitely. Uh, Andrew Clare is one of the most explosive players uh, I've ever seen. Um, he can make a guy miss on, on any given play, even if it's a bad play. And, and just being able to hand the ball off to him uh, takes a huge uh, weight off my back. Quinn Morris. We talk about Scotty Miller a lot. Let's talk about the Q-man for a second. Quinn has really kind of come out of his shell and emerged as one of the top wide receivers in the MAC. What have you seen out of him in practice that's made you say, hey, this guy is working hard. This guy is taking it to another level this year. Uh, me and Quentin have been really good friends, almost like brothers, um, ever since we stepped on this campus. And, and we all knew um, when he was a freshman going through fall camp that he was going to be a really good player. Uh, and when his time uh, was called, we knew he was going to shine, and that's what he's doing right now. Um, I got full trust in, in Quentin, and, and he's balling right now. In a few weeks, you're going to play at the oldest stadium in the FBS, one of the oldest stadiums in the country. How important is it, kind of like with Autzen Stadium, how important is it to soak in that moment and remember it, but not get wrapped up in all of it? Yes, sir. Um, just keep your emotions level, um, but, but like you said, en enjoy the moment and, and have, have fun with it. It's been three years since the last MAC championship. I'm sure you know that. Why is the 2018 team going to be the squad that changes that? Um, I think this team has really good chemistry. We have really good leaders uh, with Marcus Milton and, and Kano. Um, they've done a real good job of getting this team together, and, and we're really tight in that locker room. And I think everybody just has a, a really good focus and mentality that we can make a push at that MAC championship. Last question for you, Jarrett. You've been around two of the weather extremes. I know you're a big Texas guy, so you've been in that Texas summer, and you've experienced the lovely BG winter. Mm -hmm. Which one is more difficult to deal with and more challenging, and why? I'm going to have to say uh, the BG winter. I've never had to um, put on so many clothes and be so cold, but uh, I'll take that uh, Texas uh, summer heat any day over the BG winter. Jarrett, thanks for the time. Good luck the rest of the way. Yes, sir.